Hello everybody, I'm back. I know it's been a minute, I know, but I'm back. How y'all doing? If y'all don't know, my name is Nagira. Welcome back to my channel, It's Never Too Late. As y'all can see, we have a guest, Anastasia. Hello. I call her Shaponica, but y'all gonna have to call her Anastasia. <laughs> so we're here just to have a raw, candid, honest conversation about a bunch of everything. Womanhood, leveling up, growing, just empowerment, so. Without further ado, I'll let Anastasia tell, tell her, tell. <laughs> <laughs> I will let Anastasia tell y'all more about herself. Hi, boos. Sorry, on my YouTube channel, that's how I introduce myself. I call everybody on my channel, but, which I said I'm gonna stop saying booze because my husband said that sounds crazy. So I'm just gonna say hi, boo. And then when you watch it, I'm talking to whoever watching at the moment. It's just that one person at a time. Anyways, my name is Anastasia Barrett. Um, as Nadira already shared, my first name is Shaponica and my second name is Anastasia. So, my channel is Anastasia Barrett. And I want to just thank Nadira for the opportunity. Of <laughs> and I would like to just thank Nadira for the opportunity of even coming on her channel or us collabing, having this conversation. I feel like the conversation that we're going to have today is going to be very candid, very open, uh, very. <laughs> Very raw, okay, very raw. Like there's there's nothing off, off limits. So um, I just wanted to start out, like I say, and tell y'all a little bit, little bit about myself. I am the founder of She's Unapologetic, uh, which is an organization that I built for women to basically just unapologetically be themselves. Uh, to be unapologetic about a lot of things that they've done in life, a lot of things that they're proud of, a lot of things that they're not proud of, um, insecurities, failures, success, just, be unapologetically you and walk the walk in it completely. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically about me. Um, I guess I will give it back to Nadira. <laughs> and my channel, for my followers, I know some of y'all basically, because I try to give a little intro about my channel when I start, but for Anastasia's followers, because I know she's gonna post this, my channel is never too late. It's truly just about encouraging you all, women, mainly towards women, but men can watch it too, honestly, anyone. Just to let you all know that there's nothing in life that should stop you from doing whatever that thing is, regardless if it's spiritual, physical, writing a book or whatever. Don't ever feel like it's too late for you to do that thing. Get out of that toxic relationship. Whatever it is, I come to let y'all know that it's never too late. And as long as you wake up and God gives you birth in your body, just know that it's something else God wants you to do. So whatever that burning desire is, don't tell yourself you can't do it, it's too late. Get up, wake up, and get that thing done. Period. So, let's get our conversation started. Let's it's go. gonna be raw, it's gonna be honest. Very so let's candid. get started. Let's go. All right. We wanted to do questions to both of our platforms, right. um, but this was kind of like a, we need to have this conversation. Like, we were literally on, literally on the phone one day and we spoke, we talked for what, an hour and 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Good juicy topics conversation and I was like hmm and the deer was like I want to do an interview she had already told me she wanted to do an interview I was like Nadira this would be a good conversation on the interview yeah. like let's let's do it so okay. we're just gonna just I guess uh, discuss things that we talked about on that in that conversation mm -hmm. um, and like we both said both of our platforms is about of course women encouraging women inspiring women but men can also be a part right. my platform i will say is mainly for women um let's see anastasia i do want to ask you um something i know you talk you had went in depth with your um your platform she's unapologetic and everything if you don't mind tell the people what what really pushed you to do that like when was the moment where you said okay i want to start this platform i'm going to be serious about this platform this is my purpose mm -hmm. when when was that moment for you so um, when I first started um, She's Unapologetic, it was actually um, women with ambition. I had a business and I had a lot of people that would reach out to me asking questions about businesses and stuff and you know, just different things. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna build a community where we can all just ask each other about businesses. We can conversate about business, give tips, share different you know things um, of that nature. But as time went on and I started going through different things in my life, which I'm gonna share, um, I had some women that reached out to me and they said, I love your I love your platform. I love everything that you stand for, but I don't have a business, so I don't feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I don't ever want anybody to feel like they're not a part or like they're not welcome on anything that I do that's gonna 
or that's that's built to inspire women or encourage women. So I went through a moment in my life where I feel like I somewhat lost myself. And in that, I felt like God put me by myself for a reason. I had no, I had time, well, I had no, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I had nothing but time right. to think, self-reflect, take accountability for the things that I've done in my life, the things I didn't do in my life. And in that moment, I just felt so alone. I felt so, I don't know, just lonely and sad and confused and it was just me and God. And um, coming out of it and feeling good and getting back to my normal self, I just, I said to myself, I said, there's a lot of women in this world that feels like this when they're down. Um, when they go through things or, I don't know, sometimes you just become unhappy. Um, and I couldn't imagine them having to go through it by themselves. Because even though I say I went through it by myself, I had friends, I had family, but it's like God kept trying to get me by myself. So that's what I would do. I would I would take that time to be by myself. Um, so yeah, when I built the platform, I said I want women to have a comfortable, secured, open, um, free from judgment platform that they can come and be themselves. Yeah. Own everything that they've experienced in life. Own every scar, own every fall, own every setback, disappointment. Mm -hmm. I want them to get on this platform and speak proudly about those things. Yeah. And I told them, um, when I do speak with people, I tell women all the time at the events I've done or um, events I've spoken at, like, we have to start owning anything that's brought us to where we're at today, good or bad. Now, I say that because if we did not go through those things or experience those things, we would not be the people we are today. And so, and she's unapologetic, we're open. <laughs> you know, the things I post within that, we're open about it. You know, the questions I ask, the things I speak on. I mean, it's just very open, it's very real, it's very raw. It's it's things that I feel like we as as women, we've all experienced. You know, because me and Adira was talking and I was telling her like, as women it's sad that we beat each other up or push each other down when we all go through the same things in life. Like mm -hmm. literally the same things. Yeah. Motherhood, relationships, insecurities, um, pushing yourself to be successful like all these different categories we go through in different stages at different ages at different times but they're all the same issues you know what I mean mm -hmm. would you agree like agree. so and I think go ahead, I'm sorry. no and I think <laughs> like, I want to hear and it. I think that's as women we look at it more some women as if it's a competition Mm. And we should never compete with yes. one each other. We should never say, oh, she better, she did it, she that. We should look like if women, if we're, if we're all winning as a whole, mm -hmm. do you know how powerful mm -hmm. we all can be? Exactly. So it shouldn't be like a competition or try to, try to be better than the next. Let's all try to help each other up. Let's all try to level up together mentally because mm -hmm. it's not about the materialistics in life. Exactly. And I think women, you try to, you know, we like to post for the Instagram or relationship goals and all that other stuff that doesn't even matter but how's your soul how's your mind that's important so as women we just gotta just be there for each other because it's something just because my story isn't your story your story can help me in ways that I never even imagined exactly. so for me but I'm gonna I'm take over um, and go on about my channel since were you done mm -hmm. yeah okay. so my channel is never too late really been dropped in my spirit maybe like within three like for three years honestly for a total and as the words dropped in my spirit I was still in um, a toxic situation should I say so every time I would go through something I just always told myself it's okay it's never too late now this is when I did not see the light at the end of the tunnel but when I finally asked God to help me and that's the thing we got to realize as women we can't be in denial Okay? We have to take accountability mm. for the situation we're in. We have to say, what did I do? Because once we remove who did the damage and the hurt and all that good stuff in regards to that, that toxicity in relationships, you're able to ask yourself, well, I stayed. I made that decision. What is it about me that I need to change? And once I was able to disconnect from that toxic relationship, God kept telling me, Nadira, it's never too late. Even when I felt like 
I was at my wit's end. Even when I felt like I did too much, even when I felt like I hurt too many people, even when I felt like, well, God, how am I gonna do this? I'm a single mom, two kids, how am I gonna do this? And God kept reminding me, it's never too late. If I brought you this far, just imagine where I can take you. And that's all I want people to know is don't let your mind, don't let your past be a hindrance to your destiny. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has the final yes. say so over your life. Nobody has the final blueprint for your life. Don't let people think they know you better than you know you. Because as women, we can lose ourselves. Next. We can have a person say, girl, I know you, you want, but, and then we really start to believe it. But no, we gotta relearn ourselves. And I'm, I'm, I'm 30 years old, my birthday was May 12th by the way, but I'm 30 years old literally learning myself as a woman, as a mother, learning what I like, what I don't like, learning what I'm into. Cause when you can be, your mind can be wrapped into a way of thinking, it become normal. And normal always is not always right. So I just wanna, let, my channel is really just to tell people, do it, step out. Step out on faith and have that courage because when you know it's something you truly want to do, that passion will never die down. It's like a burning sensation that will never die down. And you know you're walking in your purpose that because it's uncomfortable. It's going to be very uncomfortable. But once you do it, you're like, all right, this is my purpose. So accountability. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Ooh, let's talk about that. That is that's let's get into accountability. Because listen, when you said that, I went, woo. Like I mm. felt that in my soul. That's a that's a pill. Woo, accountability. That mm. that's definitely a pill. Mm. I feel like um me personally, I've always I feel like I take accountability to a certain extent. Mm. I I don't know how to break that down, so I'm gonna just say how I feel it. So, with things that I've went through, I could have walked away. I could have shut it down. I could have gave it back. <laughs> and I want you to understand because a lot of things, I mean, a lot of conversations that's had like this, it's not always gotta be about a relationship. I know there's women on here that's like, I've been married since I was 21 years old. You know what I'm saying? It could be, about your your worth it could be about a job it could be about career it could be about i mean your just kids. your kids mm -hmm. motherhood anything mm -hmm. um i feel like we just have to take accountability for some of the things that we lack in or some of the choices we've made some of the decisions we made and be okay with that that's okay because yeah. that's what's going to groom you for who you are and for what's to come in the future yeah. a lot of times we see these things like she said on social media movies whatever and it's like i want that I want to be there but if you talk to that person and ask what did it take for them to get there you probably couldn't walk a day in that in person's shoes, shoes. Yeah. you know what i'm saying so we have to take accountability what am i doing today that's going to get me where i want to be tomorrow yep right you have to start making plans sticking to those plans writing out your goals not just writing about a notebooks because they're pretty and throwing them over in the corner until next year mm -hmm. write these goals out Make a plan to execute those goals, a time frame as to when you want to execute those goals. Mm -hmm. Take accountability. You're not where you are in your business. Why aren't you where you want to be in your business? Why aren't your sales where, where, where you want them to be? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Are you promoting your business? Are you speaking? Are you going to events and engaging with people? Are you posting on social media? Like in your relationship. Yes. I mean, come on. We women, sis. It's like this man, you know, we like this man ain't nothing. This man ain't nothing. That's great. But what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? If he's not treating you right, why are you still there? Yeah. If you're not getting the respect you need, why are you selling for that? Yep. If you're if you're wanting more or you want to move on, why haven't you moved on? Why haven't you got your own place? Why aren't you in a different relationship? Or why aren't you in a position or just by yourself yep. working on who you are, finding out who you are so that when you are or when you do go into the next relationship, you're ready to receive it. You're yeah. ready to actually be in it. Mm -hmm. So take accountability. I, I'm with that. Yep. And another thing about accountability, I remember I used to look at accountability from the outside looking in. Like they never want to take accountability. Blah, 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 mm, blah, blah. That's and good. it's quick for us to point out a person's lack of accountability when we're victimized, right? And I quote victimized uh -huh. because some of us are victims of, it can be mental abuse, physical that's abuse. So my compassion is still there but why i say victimize is sometimes we as women can play the victim role a little too much where if we just sit back 
and ask ourselves, well, what did I say? As, as what Anastasia just said, but as what did I do to allow myself to be here in this exact moment for this exact amount of time? Regardless of what it is. Once we take accountability and say, well, you know what? It's my fault. It's my fault just as much as it's the other person's fault because whatever decision that is, relationship, job, career, starting a business, you choose to continue to do what you're doing no matter what so i think instead of the same questions you ask about whoever or that business or that job reverse those questions and ask them about yourself and it's going to be hard because within this past two years the accountability of my life and facing the truth about myself has been hard but once you're able to face the face the truth take accountability and start healing the root that's what we got to get to as women, mm -hmm. the root of the problems. Yes, and like it'll that. make things seem a little bit easier because you're looking at it as a self, not as everybody else attacking me. You're looking at it as what can I do for myself? So I want to talk about root. I want to talk about the root. I know I used to hear people say, we got to get to the root of stuff. We got to get to the root. And I never truly understood it until I felt like I was at the lowest point of my life where I felt like I didn't understand why I didn't understand how even when I was feeling like at the moment I, at that moment I really felt like I was taking accountability but God was let, letting me know that is a root embedded into why you've been this it's some so it's some insecurities it's some damage from even in childhood mm -hmm. that makes us think that this is just who we are mm -hmm. you know and women we got to realize that we are God's daughters period point blank and we have to love up God wants the best for us so once we figure out the root and also dealing with the root, it may be hard to deal with it within yourself. So nothing's wrong with therapy, y'all. Nothing's wrong with therapy and getting that help and really digging up them issues because my, my deep root may be way, you know, may not be as bad as another person's root. You get what I'm saying? We all go through different childhood. So once we identify why we are the way we are, regardless if it's a relationship or friendship or business, and we understand the root to that, I think we'll be able to face our fears and face our insecurities and Absolutely. face our Absolutely. our challenges like as a testimony and not have that guilt and shame behind it because we like, look, I know the root of this. God working on me, God is healing me, and I'm gonna I'm a speak boldly and confidently about what I'm going through because I know the root of the problem and I know I'm doing what I have to do on my part to dig it up. Exactly. Yes, I def I agree with that 100%. And also, sometimes, I mean, I want y'all to realize, yes, this is a very candid conversation, but I feel like there's always room for compassion of your mental space, of your emotions. Um, like she said, the root is deeper than, sur than surface. Like, you have to really dig and say, why am I like this? Why can't I do this? Why do I feel unworthy of this? Why can't I accomplish this when I say I'm going to do this? <clears throat> and be compassionate mm -hmm. with yourself. Be Try to be understanding of the journey of digging to that root. Right. Okay. So don't go around or don't go and be like, oh, I'm just ter like, I'm terrible. Or I'm don't be so hard on person. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to just, how can I be, how can I make it better? Right. What can I do? Do I need to get a life coach? which I do have a business. She's on apologetic coaching. Free consultations. I, I, yes, I'm doing free consultations. Uh, I forgot to the date. I think, I think it's, it's May 25th? May 25th. Or May 26th, it's one of those. I think it's May 26th. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm doing free consultations. And just like I said, I, in those consultations, I just want to talk to you, what is going on with you? Mm -hmm. Who are you? What are you looking to do? What are you looking to get? And from there, we're gonna dig in and we're gonna dissect everything we can dissect. And we're gonna we're gonna um, create a plan that you will execute, because I can't do it for you. <laughs> now, I'll help you make the plan. We'll get it together. I'll definitely guarantee the end result. If you can give me 100%, we can execute it. But I don't want you to be hard on yourself. As she just told y'all, her channel's name is It's Never Too Late. And that is very, very true. I stand. 10 toes down behind that, it's never too late. No matter what you went through, um, no matter how hard, you know, it, I promise you, you can overcome it. Yep. 
I promise you, you have to, we have to start with our mindset after that accountability. Okay, I've taken accountability. I know I mixed, I messed up X, Y, Z, December, January, February, 2022, 2021, 2020. Now, 2012, 2005, but it's like now, I need to change my mindset so that I no longer let that deter me mm -hmm. from yep. where I need to go. Yep. Like, I need to get my mindset together so that that part is gone. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That part is gone. Now I gotta think positive. I gotta think, how can I move forward from here? Yeah. Okay, so don't worry about the past relationships. Don't worry about the friends who uh, did whatever they could do to betray you. Don't worry about the job who felt you weren't a worthy worker of their company. Don't mm -hmm. worry about, like, just don't worry about any of that. Yeah. Because none of that determines who you are and none of that determines how far you can go. None of that determines your worth. You got that right. Your worth. And I want to talk about worth because I feel like and you, we've talked about that. We've talked many talks. We've about had that. many <laughs> talks about that, and we both said that we feel like your knowing your worth determines a lot of how you move. Yep. Knowing your worth will cut out a lot of things that you will not accept. Yep. Okay, being worthy and knowing the extent of your worth, it's like it puts a boundary fence up around you. Mm -hmm. Like, no, this that. No, I'm not accepting that. Yep. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not accepting that. Mm -hmm. It's it's no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we have to know your word. Mm -hmm. As women, we we settle down young. I mean, think about it. We get out of college of what? Which I didn't even finish I didn't college. Finish, so. <laughs> I wanna say, I think you're supposed to be done by the time you're 21. Right, but you get out and, we'll just say 21. You get out into the world, you're gonna take the world by storm, right? We we got it all figured out. I know I did. I was gonna move to either Atlanta or California. I was gonna have to live the dream, okay? But I, I didn't even know who I was. Why are we settling down at 21? We don't even know who we are. We don't know what we want. We don't know where we, we want to go right, in life. Right. We don't know boundaries. We don't know risk. We don't know these things. Mm -hmm. And we jump out there thinking we're ready. We're grown. You know, we're real grown <laughs> until until life happens, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're real grown until life happens man and I think another thing with worth worth is deep and a lot of women we can talk about the next woman and say oh she don't know her worth she don't know her worth but yet you in the worst not or the same situation when you know your worth you able to tell yourself I don't care who don't like it man job boss friend this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And Probably. your worth yeah. goes in line with integrity with your morals. Mm -hmm. It go hand in hand. If you won't allow disrespect from a man, don't allow disrespect from a friend or a coworker. Yeah. If you won't allow to be lied to or feel like you always gotta, you know, put yourself in the back burner, don't allow that from anybody. And we have to know that we are beautiful, period. We are beautiful. God made us wonderful. Once we realize that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's eyes, it will be easier to know our worth, honestly. And I know I'm always coming from a spiritual aspect. I had to learn to look at myself how, how God looked at me. Because I learned my identity in a relationship because I didn't know who I was. But once God started unveiling my eyes, unveiling the scales of the ways that people view me and the way I view myself, God started to tell me, how do I look at you? How do I value you? How do I treat you? And I know it may say, well, God's not here. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. The same way I talk to Anastasia, my sister, is the same way we can talk to God. Yes. And no, people are not perfect. You can give people grace. But those core values define your worth. Mm -hmm. Define your worth. You can't one hand say, I'll accept this from my friend, man, or whatever. But if he get mad and accidentally call me out my name, just only a few times, uh-uh, 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 no. We are queens. We don't. We should never let a man disrespect us or even a friend. And I think once we start to understand that it doesn't matter if it's a man, a job, a boss, a friend, anyone, your core, how you are treated should never change. It should exactly. it should stay the same regardless of who it is. Exactly. So women, we just have to realize that we are worthy. We are worthy. And, and go ahead, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get to talk and we don't. And another thing, um, what's I about to say? Okay. Do not let your past 
define who you are. Mm. Do not let your past define the destiny that God has created yes. you. Because if you took a yes. blueprint of my picture and my past, it will be a lot of people that will think that, oh, the deer don't deserve to be here. But God knew me better. Ooh, I feel that. Mm. But God knew me better, even when I didn't know myself. Mm. So don't let your past decisions, don't let your past mistakes, don't let those past hurt. Everybody has a past. Don't let that past define who God has created you to be. Because the same Nadira in 2010, God was still with me throughout this process. And he knew that every past, every decision will put me right where I am today. So look at that past as a testimony and walk in that thing proudly. Let, let go of that shame, that guilt, the trauma. Let God heal you. And remember, get to the root of it. Because he'll, uh, he'll, he'll reveal things to you, but you gotta be in the right mindset. Yes. What were you saying? Because I, I yes, interrupted you. Yeah, yeah. You ain't got to <laughs> preach, and I'm over here like, yes, yes, yes. Um, but that's so good, though. But it, that is good. That is, mm -hmm. that is very, very good. And I feel like, I don't know, it's like it's so easy as women because we wear so many hats, so many titles. It's so easy to just get lost and consumed in everything but ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, I've had friends or family that's got consumed in their husbands or their boyfriends or their kids or their jobs. And it's like, I just, or their families. You know, right. sometimes we just be so consumed in our families. We don't even know how to disconnect from, from that. Right. But I'm telling you, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah. You have to love on yourself. Just like you're pouring into everybody else, you have to pour into yourself. Yeah. You have to. That self-care, that self-love is a necessity. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Mary, I don't care if you're president, I don't care if you're a mother of 30 kids. Yeah. Listen, you still need that time to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that all ties back into getting to the root of who you are. That all ties back into knowing your worth. That all ties back in just to mental health, all of it. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Yeah. Take that time to yourself and don't get, and that's hard. I don't like telling people don't, but try, try not to. to get lost because I've been there. And once you get lost in life and all these things around you, it's really hard to come back to yourself, like come back to who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, on my channel, I spoke um, weeks ago about getting married. I got married in July. Yeah, she's a wife. That's a wife. <laughs> I got married in July. And a month after that, after that, my brother-in-law was murdered. He was 22 years old. He was married in Nashville, Tennessee, downtown at a bar called Dirk's Bentley, uh, Whiskey Row. Um, Security guards piled up on him. It was eight security guards that piled up on him as he yelled he could not breathe. He yelled numerous of times. They continued to lay on him until he took his last breath, right? And that was a month and six days after being married, wow. right? So you know how they say, you're in your honeymoon phase. Oh, you know, we, we didn't get that. We were, we were grieving in our honeymoon phase. But because um, and I say that to say when we talk about the root and all that, the foundation is what I normally use. Your foundation has to be solid. Period. And because our foundation was so solid, it just made us stronger in our marriage. Even if it would have been that soon, mm -hmm. because our foundation and the root was so strong, we were able to get through it together. Yes. And it's the same thing as, as it's just an individual. Like if your root and your foundation is solid, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, physically solid, then anything that comes your way, now I'm not saying it's gonna be a breeze, cause that, that was one of the hardest things for sure that we've ever had to face, mm -hmm. together and just individually. Right. Um, that was my brother, my husband's only brother and his baby brother, he was 22. Mm -hmm. And we're still grieving and still getting through that, but by the grace of God, you know, he's definitely helped us every day, every minute, every second to, to overcome, not overcome it, but to get through it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. Yeah, it's just these life don't stop. I'm sorry, it don't. Um, 2027, 2028, we don't know. We we just don't know the pandemic. Everything that comes our way, if we're not mentally, physically, and emotionally in a good space, you're gonna always feel like you're in a dark place. You're gonna always feel like I don't know who I am. I feel like I'm being tugged in all these different places. Yeah. Like, no, work on you. Yeah. And I want to piggyback piggyback on that. Um, it was two things that came to mind when you were talking about that. 
Um, as Anastasia says, she is married. But one thing I want to realize is that and she was already in a good place mentally. Yes. You know, when she got married, it wasn't as if Tony had to complete something within her. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So women, good. we have to know that. Yes. Don't think a man going to put, oh, this is it. I got my cherry on top. Let's yes. go. Mm -mm. Yes. We got to know who we are as and women. I've been there. Yep. I've been there. Trust And me. it does not work. No, I didn't got this. I didn't got the trophy. If, if any trophy a person can get, I got the trophy, <laughs> the diploma. The, the certificate, <laughs> it's been sealed, signed, delivered, flew out, and came yeah, back. So we gotta work. know that. We no. gotta be solid who we are no. and know our foundation. Yes. So when God brings that man to us, the even brain. if it's not your husband, we know. Exactly. Because we're not gonna need a man to just talk good. Exactly. We're gonna have to let them actions come through. And that's we're not, all within your worth. Yep. That's all within your worth, yep. sorry. No, you fine. <laughs> or that job. We're not gonna let that job make it seem like the money is everything. We're gonna already know. Mm -hmm. So once we, you know, just have the, um, lost my train of thought. But once we know that we're, our foundation is strong within ourselves, then we'll be good. We'll be real good. Question. Mm -hmm. So let's say somebody's watching this video right now. Right. Just came out of a relationship, mm -hmm. been in it for years. Um, let's say that they have past trauma from family, like they hold on, they held on to the relationship because I don't know, they're they don't have a family, they don't have right. any structure. Yeah. What would you say to them? I would say to them that if that family, at first, the question I would ask myself is, the bond and the relationship that I had with that family was it based off of the relationship I had with that man? Honestly. No, no, I'm saying so this woman's family mm -hmm. is just a mess toxic okay. like she so don't she, have you know how like you if you lose a, or break up with somebody or mistreat you go home like mom mm -hmm. or you know your sisters or somebody right. and they're like i don't have no family like he's all i have okay and i say this because i have um through my she's unapologetic i have women that reach out to me mm -hmm. um and you know just ask me if uh, ask for my advice right and uh, because i have a business i stay within a window but i try to respond and you know in the best way I can. Right. But I had somebody that asked me that. And um I get the question. You get it? Mm -hmm. You do? And she asked me that. She's like, I don't know what to do. She was like, I know, you know, my friends judge me, but I don't have any family. I don't have anybody. And that's fine. And I'm like, that's that's deep. That's very deep, but we have to ask yourself, would you rather stay because of the family and be miserable? Or would you rather leave and ask God to bring you family and that was my response if you stay 10 years from now what's gonna change yep what what's gonna be different yep don't let that time be a reason why you stay Whew. because <clears throat> oh, let me drink. I got it I got the trophy I'm trying to, I got a lot of trophies I got a lot of hats for y'all don't let the time that you deal with somebody be a reason why you stay and don't think loyalty defines love it's not Loyalty is a product of love, but loyalty isn't everything. Because a woman can be loyal to a man that treat her like a dog mm. while she sit up in the house and cook and clean all the time. So it all ties together that like, be loyal to the right person. But never forget to be true to yourself. Not that right. E ever, never, ever. Mm -hmm. That, that, I'm staying true to myself. I'm, I'm remembering what my boundaries and I'm remem remembering my worth. Yep. That comes first. Yep. Like she said, before I got married, I knew who I was. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I was not gonna settle for. Mm -hmm. I had been in a previous relationship for a long time. And I feel like, you know, I've heard people say, if I could do it all over again, I would've just not did it. No, anything that I've been through in life, I would do it again. I mean, I'm not gonna enjoy it. Mm -hmm. you know? But I would do it again because it taught me what I don't want. It taught me how I shouldn't move. It taught me what I shouldn't accept, what I should accept, what I what I shouldn't do to other people. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to take accountability in everything I do. I told myself that. Um, in 2018, I said, going forward, I'm taking accountability for everything that I do to the best of my ability. Now, I ain't perfect. You know, right. So still working on it. You know? <laughs> so, so, so still baby stepping Give, give us some grace. Yeah, give me some grace. I'm still working on it. But I'm taking accountability because... We learn through mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like going through those things, you know, like little kids, if they go and touch the stove and it burns them, they you ain't never got to worry, worry about them touching that stove no more. You can leave them in here for 10 hours and they ain't gonna touch the stove. Yeah. It's the same thing with life. Yeah. We have to learn from our mistakes. Like we have to learn 
what works for us. Yep. I always say, fi figure out your blueprint. What's your blueprint? Mm -hmm. Everybody have their own blueprint. Yep. But within that, there's boundaries. Mm -hmm. There's no's. There's I don't want to. I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. This is me season. You know what I'm saying? And so, don't, and, and let, let's not have gray areas, you know? That's what messes us up, those mm -hmm. little gray areas, because the gray area, area can turn to 20 years of just, just time. And that's one thing we gotta realize. When I think back, I was in a whole situation for years, over a decade. And when you think about time, you can't get any of that back. You can't go back and say, oh, give me, give me back six of them years, man. But you can't. But that's why when she say we have to learn, not only say, oh, I deserve better, I deserve da 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 da, and then you go right back. Mm -hmm. Or you just do that a different same person. thing. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. So my mind, as she, as Anastasia mentioned earlier, your mindset has to change. It has to change. Even in them lonely seasons, even when you feel like, man, I'm by myself, know that you know what, what I'm doing will produce something great. Exactly. Because I'm doing it for me. And it doesn't matter if you don't have anybody in your corner. It doesn't matter if everybody looking at you like, Girl, why are you, why are you so, you know, you just always, no, 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 no. Don't, don't lower your morals or lower your standards for anybody. Mm. And let those mistakes make a person that did it sit back and say, oh, wow. I don't know this girl. I bet mm -hmm. you don't. You know what I mean? So we, we have, have to know. <laughs> yep, thank you. We have to just know that let those mistakes turn into lessons and let those lessons turn into our lifestyle. Exactly. And to piggyback off of that, mm -hmm. when you're constantly in these situations and you're like, oh God, I'm so tired, I'm so tired. I want you to think about it like this. And like I said, this ain't always got to be about no man, sis, because there's, yes. there's a lot of other things. But you know relationships play a big role in our lives i'm right. 35 she's 30. so just turned 30. Whoop. just started 30. Hey. Little spring chicken. <laughs> uh, but remember if you hold on to what's not yours what's mm -hmm. not supposed to be yours was never designed to be yours you can never get what was designed to be yours that's good whether it was your husband if you hold on to this man you're not happy you're waiting on the ring you're waiting on him to do what you want him to do He's not he's yours. Not do it. He's yeah, not he's never gonna do it because he's not yours. You're you're blocking your man. Yep. You've got this man that you think is the man you're supposed to be with right here. Then your man is on the other side. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But as long as you're holding on to this and got him right here, mm -hmm. your other man just over there. He probably out here doing you know hitting some. I don't know what he's doing. You know yep. what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he doing something. Yep. That's Because he's not with the person he's supposed to be with. Same thing with a job. If you have a job and you hate it now. We went through a pandemic, so a lot of our mindsets has changed. I know mine has. Mm -hmm. It's like we, you know, money. <laughs> you gotta get your money, so, right. you know. Right. However, if you're in a position where you can get something different, then also think about that. Like, if I don't let this go and stop being comfortable because I know the job, I will never get the job that's gonna respect that's me, that's gonna yeah. revalue me, that's gonna pay me what I'm worth. Yeah. I will never get that because I'm too comfortable right here. I'm too yeah. comfortable with this. Yeah. Even though I know I'm not even supposed to get. I'm not treated how I'm supposed to be treated. I know the job. I can do this in my sleep. Yeah. And another mm -hmm. thing to piggyback on that, God's not, I think we have to realize that God know us, y'all. We can't try to outplay oh. him. We we can't try to play chess <laughs> with God when he already know all of our moves oh, until yeah. we die. You know, we so he more. like, I'm not going to give you that job. I'm not going to give you that husband. I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to give you what you, what I know you're going to get one day until you able to sit back and realize the things that you need to get mm -hmm. rid of. So we got to be honest with ourselves. This mm -hmm. is self thing. Oh, I got to say something. Go ahead. I got to say okay. something. <laughs> I got to say this. Cause this is one thing that just, mm -hmm. okay. The whole Sierra prayer. Mm, talk on it. Jesus, listen. Okay, I love Sierra. That's my girl. I love her and Ro. So that's their, they have a beautiful union that they've worked for and that God designed the for them. them. Okay. Right. Stop saying you want Sierra's prayer. Mm. I've had people say that to me like, we need your prayer. You know, you whatever prayer you... No, you don't. We don't have the same story, sis. Yep. We don't have the same background, sis. Yep. We didn't cry the same tears. We wouldn't, we wouldn't wish praying for the same thing yep. like your life is designed for you yep. so what, what you want be specific and ask God because he'll give when I you. prayed for God in that season where I was ready for change I was very specific mm -hmm. like she said I talked to him just like when I talked to my dad on the phone and we talking about everything breaking it down I broke it down yep. and I was very serious in being obedient in what I was gonna do to, to get those things because mm -hmm. that's another thing you can't 
want these things, then you don't want to be obedient to receive those things. Here we go. It's a two way street. You know? That's another one. It's a two way street. So about quit saying Sierra's prayer. Sierra yeah. probably looking at this. Well, Sierra made money off of it because she, I think she got a song. Sierra. She got prayer. summer with summer longer, I think. Yeah, and I like the song. Yeah, I, I never heard, heard it. it. Well, I don't know if it was a song. I can't remember if she was just talking. I don't remember, but. Mm -hmm. That's Sierra's prayer. Sis said her prayer. Sis stood on that prayer. And y'all don't know her personal walk with God to get what she received in the end. Yep. Work on your prayer. Quit trying to live for what you see on social media. Yep. Okay? Yep. Build your own life. Build your own story. And, and include God in that. Because he's, he's the ultimate creator. He's the ultimate narrator of your story. Exactly. So walk within your lane. Yep. And to piggyback on that... Once we realize that Sierra's prayer, who else? Beyonce, Jay Z, blah mm -hmm. blah blah. Anybody, right? Well, right now it can be anybody. It can be anybody. Because we're so. I swear, it can be anybody. It can be somebody buy them a car, and it's like, oh God, I want to have that relationship. And then, and then you will put so much work to get that same thing that person has, just to make it as if you better or you you up, you know, you got that same car, you yes. on the same level, and then. Yes. Say you don't get the car. Say you don't get the man. You back where you started. Mm -hmm. When really, if you just ask yourself, why do I? Why do I want this? Why do you know? Ask yourself those deep, deep questions and say, God, I don't care about Sierra and Russell. They're a great question. And I'm part of um, Anastasia's group. She got a Facebook group too. Mm -hmm. And I posted. I think it was Thursday. <clears throat> She's actually a part of my team too. Yes, my so great. Cool. So great. That's my girl. So great. I had posted. It's okay to be inspired by someone. But don't try to intimidate, um, um, how you say the word, uh, duplicate, that, duplicate that person. Mm -hmm. Don't try to say, I want to be them. Mm -hmm. It's okay to see Russell and mm -hmm. Sierra and say, wow, they're an inspiration yes. of true love, inspiration yes. of true marriage. And say, you know, God, Absolutely. I know you will give that to me one day. I know you will bless me with a good man that loves you and honors you and, and respects women. Mm -hmm. But don't say, God, I need that. I need a man like Russell. Because we don't know who we are. We don't know how they are. Mm -hmm. So don't be inspired, but don't and don't ever ask, say, I want that. Because mm -hmm. you never know what that thing is. That's their thing. And let them have their marriage. And you want and you desire that for yourself. Or even if there's things you see that they do that you want to implement into your relationship. Like mm -hmm. I know I seen a picture circulating a couple weeks ago um, on Facebook or Instagram. <clears throat> and it was a picture of them praying together. And everybody was like, this is what a relationship should be. And that's mm -hmm. fine. Like, yeah. I absolutely agree. Like, if me and my husband didn't pray together, then I would have known from the jump, you're not my husband anyway. Exactly. So don't even propose to me, homie. We yep. just need to speak and keep it moving. Yep. These are things that you should already know in your mind what you want. But if you don't know your worth and you haven't went through the process of finding who finding out who self is, right. really dissecting things within yourself and figuring out what you want, mm -hmm. you're not going to know what you want anyway. It's yep. going to be a just a piece it's of everybody. all over the place. <laughs> yeah, and this person going to do this, you're going to let this person do mm -hmm. that, and then you're going to be back crying about this yeah. with another person. Yeah. Another really thing I want to get on. I know we didn't talk about a few topics, but this one topic, this is important. Anastasia, you mentioned obedience. Oh yeah. That's good. Many of us want the final prize, but don't want to do the work in being obedient. We want it on a, a golden platter, but don't want, don't want to be obedient. We want to have that book published, but we can't have the obedience to do the work to get mm -hmm. that book published. Even writing, you know, writing pages. Yes. We want to have marriage, because I'm single. You know, I'm not married. But I, if you don't make the choice to say, I'm going to be obedient to God's word. I'm going to live a life that is pleasing to God to position myself that when marriage comes, I'm able to receive it. Mm -hmm. We got to know what we have to do. We got to know what mm -hmm. God asks us to do. God's not going to keep playing with us, y'all. Because I do see women that, that or have messaged me like, I can't wait to get married, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at you on social media, sis, and you all here twerking and... Now, this is a judge-free zone. You know right. what I'm saying? I always tell people, live, be live you unapologetically, right. but right. if you want to twerk, then unapologetically throw that thing around. Okay? <laughs> Let's be very clear. Right. <laughs> but it has to make sense. Right. Like, you have to align the things that you're asking for with the things you're doing. Right. And when I was, um, when people reach out about businesses, I'm a very blunt person. Mm -hmm. So, when I would ask them, like, well, you know, what, what's your goals? Like, in five years, where do you see your business? They was like, I don't know. I just want to put on clothes and take pictures. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, since you don't need a business, you just right. need an Instagram. You need to go back to the drawing. Yeah, like, like you don't need a business to do that. Right. But anything you do, like she said, marriage, motherhood, whatever, 
there has to be a plan, there has to be a foundation, and you have to be grounded, of course, in God, first right. and foremost. Right. And you just have to know yourself. Like, I can't say that enough. Oh my God, I can't say that enough. When I really realized who I was, Man. and really just figured out, what do I want? Like, what do I want to do with my life? What do right. I want? Right. All that was broken down when I was spending that time by myself, mm -hmm. and just me and God. Like, right. That's when I figured that out. Right. And one thing I can say, it's it, it's a process. I it's have really one. Good. I have one question though. Mm -hmm. And I've I've spoke from a or I've spoken from a married woman's standpoint. Mm -hmm. I've spoke on that. Mm -hmm. But you. And if I'm asking too much, let me know. We can cut all this out. With any guy, know we they still don't know this. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but as you just said, you're 30 years old. Right. You said you're single. Right. You said you're a mother. Too right. Cute. Two kids, two kids, single mom. mom. Yes. As women, because I didn't get married till I was 34. Mm -hmm. As women, I feel like when you hit 30, mm -hmm. it's like a oh my goodness, where's he at? I'm 30. <laughs> if and you know, I need to have a baby. I need. To, I need to find a man. I need to be married by next week. Like what's up? Like what's up? Right. What would you tell a woman that's 30 right now in your same shoes? Mm -hmm. You know, two kids, single, not married. I just said single, so clearly. <laughs> what would you say to them right now? Right. I would tell you to wait on God and continue to trust his timing. Mm. And even if you're not spiritual watching this, because everyone isn't just, you know, God. But that's, that's the only place I can come from is trust God's timing. Mm. Because a lot of times we'll think we're ready for something. And then you'll find yourself being in it for four or five years and then, and then it's not working out. You tell each other you grew apart, you know? So I will tell you to understand, one, why do you want it so bad? Do you want it because you see everybody else with it? Do you want it just to post a picture? Get to the root, here we go. It's all gonna come back to that root. Get to the root to why you want marriage. Yes, I want marriage, I desire that, I want that. But I know that God is gonna give that to me, period. And if it happens in five years or 10 years, I'm going to know that it's on God's timing. Cause look at it as what more work can I do within myself mm. to position myself to be ready for my husband. Yes. You know? And that's how I thought about it. When I became single, mm -hmm. I would say that I'm like, it's like this weight was lifted off of me because I'm like, now that I position myself to receive, not only a husband, but I'm gonna speak on a husband. Mm -hmm. not a, now, now that I'm in a position to perceive my Lord, now I don't lost my words. <laughs> now that I'm in a position to receive those things that I've prayed for, yes. I'm happy because now I can I can catch it at any time. Yep. I might catch it at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. I might catch it over at the uh, skating rink. I don't know. I'm gonna catch it though, and I'm I'm in position to receive it. Like every day I'm in position, and every day that I don't receive it, that just gives me another day to work on me, yep. to get even more uh, qualified for it, yep. for That's what good. God is making for me. You know what I'm saying? So don't look at it like, oh, here it is. Here it is. It's now been 32 days, five hours, 600 hours, and yep. whatever. Yep. I've still not received it. Yep. Don't let that worry. I mean, don't let that waiting turn into worry. Yes. Your waiting season is your growing season. Yep. I'm telling you. Yep. You grow, 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 yep. grow. Yep. Work on you. Yes. Work on you. Yes. And get connected. Honestly, besides Anastasia, my connection was my sister's. My bond was my sisters. And I remember praying, asking God to bring me godly friends, bring me good, genuine friends that genuinely love me and care for me. And within the past months, me and Anastasia has connect, we have connected as if we known each other for 10 years. Oh my God. And it's been nothing but God, a God destined relationship. And we have to be able, and it may hurt, but we have to be able to realize who is assigned to our life, who is attached to our life. Got that from a sermon, a uh, pastor in North who Carolina. Who is assigned and who is attached? Yes. We gotta ask ourselves wow. those deep questions. Some people are not wow. assigned to our lives. They're only attached. But just because they are only attached doesn't mean that they cannot be used to end the story that God has for you. Mm. You know, just because they're attached doesn't mean that they can't so still. Yeah, Honey. that's good. You, you know, just because, you know, some people think if they're not assigned, then they bad. No. You can have some good attachments. Mm. You can have some good attachment that has transformed you. Because yes, I've had one. I've and had that it. attachment has transformed and helped mold in my way of thinking. Just can't go with you to the next chapter. Thank you. Just got to let them go. And let them go in love. Let's not hold on to bitterness. Unforgiveness Ooh. is the root 
Listen, you will stay in bondage. I'm for oh holding grudges. I feel like that's my spe my specialty. Like mm. you know when we build resumes and we like, well, I'm gonna put this on her because baby, I'm overqualified. Okay, <laughs> I'm over. I was overqualified for holding grudges, baby. There was mm. no grudge holder on this earth that compete with me. Mm. Okay, none. Mm. I will write you off in a second. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long I've known you. I don't care how deep the bond was. I don't care. I don't care if we went and sailed the, the big ocean together. Okay? You cross me. I don't lie. Done. We're done. Mm. Okay? But I was watching a sermon one day on YouTube, and it said, holding grudges is a door for blocking your blessings. That's true. That's true. So when you close that door, and it's, it's a, a grudge door, your blessings stay on that side. Like you, you close it. So when you close the door, it can't come out, it can't go in, right? Yep. So when I close that door, it's like a grudge, a grudge. All these blessings is just blocked, 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 mm -hmm. block, right? So to stop holding grudges, it basically said you can pray about it and forgive them. Forgive them. What we have to realize is forgiveness is not always for the person. You're not gonna look weak. You're mm -hmm. not gonna look like you're soft to have mm -hmm. you wanna put it. Forgiveness is for you. Yep. And it's not about how you feel. It's not. And I, I I forgive. Like I had a list. It was probably about five hundred and sixty-five thousand people on that list. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to say a real number. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm about to start on this this week. I'll Man. get done by next year with the list I got. But I had hard. to let it go. And I'm joking. I don't have that many grudges. I don't have that many grudges held, but because I know my worth and I know what I bring to the table, mm -hmm. I do sometimes feel this should always be reciprocated. But I've learned mm -hmm. that we can't expect us and people. We can't expect the things we do. Everything we bring, we can't expect that from other people. Right. You know what I'm true. saying? Stay true to you. Stay true. And if you find those people, hold on to them. Hold on What's to that song? Value. Uh, I can't think of the song. It's a song here <laughs> when they say hold on to them. I can't think of the song. <laughs> Yes, hold on yeah. to them. And those that aren't meant to be, let them go. Let them but go. let those grudges go. Yeah, Get those blessings that you've been mm -hmm. praying for. They're not worth it. Like, they not. Let it go. And in the sermon I was going to say, she basically just said, even if every day you got to go to bed and say, I forgive, I let go, I will no longer hold on to this. Then do that. Yeah. And move in it. You can't yeah. be like, I forgive. And then the next day, like, you know what? I don't like her no more. Like, yep. you gotta literally let go. Yeah. And a note to uh, put on the forgiveness, probably the last thing about forgiveness. I, I started learning that forgiveness isn't a feeling, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And when you really start to know that you have forgiven someone, it's off of your actions toward that person or situation. Mm -hmm. And I know some people say, well, what? You know, for instance, if your best friend hurts you and you normally had her blocked, you on Facebook posting little side messages, you know, talking about it to your friends. That shows you still have some unforgiveness. That still shows you have some bitterness. But when you tell yourself, Lord, I forgive them. I don't feel like I've forgiven them. My heart still hurt, but I forgive them. Mm -hmm. Then you will stop reacting how you feel. It's okay to feel how we feel because it's a process. Mm -hmm. But don't react to those feelings. Mm -hmm. let, that, let that feeling just be with, you know, let God deal with that emotion. But don't react on that feeling. That's how you know you've been you know, on, truly first forgiven. Lady, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the key point because I, I was always wondering did I really forgive I still feel this way mm -hmm. it's not about how you forgive mm -hmm. what have your actions changed because the old Daryl would have been doing this but the new me is not even worth my time I forgive them and what God has for them they'll have for them and don't think people will get away with doing wrong in your life they're going to have to come to face to face with that yes. thing regardless of what it is if that friend you know slept with your man or that friend told all your business or that job fired Trying you for no yeah. reason. God got something for you. Mm -hmm. And also God got something for them. God yes. sees everything. And so don't let that those friends. Mm -hmm. I prayed for yep. it. Like when I was when I got married, I was like, because I mean most of my friends are married or very grounded. Like I'm very, very picky about my friends. <laughs> you everybody don't get access to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm very, very special. Yes. Okay? And we all are. Like own that. Like you're very, very special. That little circle, that little bubble around you, that's your space, okay? Protect that. Yep. If you see that this person is constantly in drama or constantly can't be loyal, whatever, don't invite them into your circle, okay? I'm very, like, the friends I've had, Nadir, you're probably like the friend that I've had, that I've met, you know, that haven't been friends as long, but I feel like we've known each other for like 20 exactly. years, like seriously. Mm -hmm. But I've had my friends 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. Friends. 
Yeah. Okay, we use that loosely, but friends. Okay, I've not had to question them. We can speak on how we feel. We can have healthy disagreements. You know what I'm saying? We can call each other, get advice, and expect the real. You're not going to get nothing watered down for me and my friends. Yep. Keep it 100, yep. okay? And do it in love. And do it in love. It's all about how you say it. It not is. Really much, it's much not what you say. say. Mm -hmm. It's how you say it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You love your friends, so say it in love. Yep. Speak to them like you want to be spoken to. Yep. And yeah, this was, this was good. good. I this was loved so it. Good. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I, I do. Really did. Um, I'm so excited. Do you have any last things you want to share? I don't. I just want to say stay true to yourselves. Love yourselves. When I say love yourselves, I mean love yourselves. All that time and energy and um, hurt that you put into these men. And, you know, love yourselves that hard. Yeah. Take Love yourselves out. unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Take yourself out. Yeah. Take yourself to eat. Go get your nails feet done, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know for me, my self-care time sometimes is just reading my book. My husband and my son, because I also have a son, um, he's 13 years old, and they know when I'm reading my book, it's, it's skirt. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is me time. Mm -hmm. I got my candle lit. I got my wine. This is my time. Yes. Take that time to yourself. Yeah. And love yourself enough to know that you are worthy of that. You are worthy of happiness. You are worthy of peace. Yes. You are worthy of all things that are um, possible on this earth. There's nothing too big, nothing too small for you. And God will blow that's, our That's minds. all I had to uh, close out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And just remember, God will do the unthinkable. He will do things that my mind be everywhere. And I'm like, God, if I can think this, I know what you have for me is even mm -hmm. bigger. So I'm exactly. ready. And we're going to stay obedient. We're going to stay grounded. And we're not going to lower our standards for anybody. Exactly. I don't care how good they look. I don't care how chocolate they are, how pretty their teeth are. <laughs> we're going to stay grounded. To she who said we chocolate. Are. <laughs> vanilla, honey. I love my vanilla. <laughs> but this was a good, was and, I, good. and I pray that you all enjoyed this. I pray that it came off as very just being honest, coming from love, and coming from a place of experience. And we tried to have as much structure as possible, yes. but it's just. It was so much we wanted to talk about. You know, when like, we start talking, man, we start talking. It just go. <laughs> but yeah, but thank, thank you so much for having me you on your channel. And this will you also be welcome. shared on my channel as well, y'all. Yes. And we're gonna link, I'm gonna link your group, Facebook group. Yes. YouTube. Yes. And, and my website, my business website yes. will be linked as well. Yes. And um, both, this will be posted to both of our channels. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. And Anastasia Barrett. Right. But the channels will be linked to each. So right, mine will be listed on hers and hers will be listed on mine. Yes. So okay. don't get confused when like, wait, this, are, you know, y'all yeah. put two and two together. Yeah. But before we end out, I want to end out in prayer. So I just pray that everything is just, I pray, I really pray that y'all watching, whoever y'all are, that y'all truly got something from it. I pray y'all, yes. even if it's just yes. one person. And I was going to say also, because on my channel, I started it last year real quick, but mm -hmm. I kind of like with all that I had going on with the wedding, lost my brother-in-law, I it went to hope. So now i'm trying to bring everything that i'm going to be bringing on the channel so this i know um my subscribers on my channel are probably going to be like what? where the fashion at where the vlog <laughs> listen i live i like to have fun i love fashion i love life i live i don't i'm not a person that's like oh you know i'm only gonna do this i'm only gonna knit i'm not gonna <laughs> Like, I, I love to live, you know, respectfully and as a wife and as a mother, you know, nothing crazy. But um, this is my first channel. This is my first video that's going to go towards my empowering segment. Yeah. That's that's part of my channel. Right. Even though it says fashion, I'm sorry, even though it says fashion and lifestyle at the top, I'm going to get that redone because it's going to be fashion, lifestyle and women empowerment. Yeah, and this is the first start of it. So thank you. all We're going to end in prayer. Yes. Father God, I thank you for bringing this unionship together, God. I thank you for allowing Anastasia to be part of this, God. I thank you for bringing our friendship together, Lord. I ask that whoever watches this video, that they are blessed, that they got something from it, Lord, and that you want all of us to be who you called us to be, man or women, God. You want us to walk in our calling. You want us to walk in our destiny unapologetically. So, God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for the moments to come, Father God. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I hope you all enjoyed it. If y'all want to see more videos like this, comment it below. We don't mind yes. chopping it up. Y'all can even send us some topics. I can drop my social media because yes. she don't really do social media. Not at all. You can definitely hit me <laughs> up, talk about some topics, and we will definitely do a part two. Yes. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Yes. All right. Thank like y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>